<laughs> All right. Let's I think that we're bearing the lead here. I think that what we just discovered in this whole discussion is that Bill Frist is going to be running for office again sometime. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't said one word the whole time we've been talking. This way. Uh, <laughs> Let's move, let me ask you a couple of other lighter questions. <laughs> Marcy asks, what do you think of people who say President Obama doesn't display enough emotion? He doesn't. <laughs> you know, I, really? I, yeah, I, I, for, what, what he, should he, he do? He, charismatically, he, he, he communicates very well, better than any president I've, I've seen. But, and I, I saw it in the health care debate, especially in the last six weeks, that the real empathy with the person who didn't have insurance, the person who really is affected, who does deserve insurance uh, today, because having insurance makes a difference. He never expressed that to the American people, that a person without insurance doesn't do as well as somebody with. And I think if he had, he would have been able to get broader support, Republican support, instead of passing a purely partisan well, bill. I, I, I Senator, completely wait, wait. disagree. Yeah. You, go, you, you disagree yeah. first, and then <laughs> I'll disagree after. Senator, you're saying that if Obama had made a more compelling emotional case that he would have gotten more Republican votes? <laughs> he would have gotten, he, he I, yeah. Oh, I understand. Yes. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, just... you know, <laughs> right, you know, my point Not is, being President Obama passed a bill in a partisan way which in history, Social Security originally didn't pass in a partisan way, Medicare originally didn't pass in a partisan way, civil rights legislation you know, in a partisan way. And I, say, and I say that only because President Obama is the first president to have major, massive social, social legislation that didn't capture anybody beyond his basic base. But, but, but listen, but Republican, Republicans, when, so the, the first time that we tried health reform when Clinton was in office, the Republicans came out with an alternate plan. A lot of what Obama tried to pass this time was stuff that was from the Republican alternate plan from 1993. And all the Republicans who introduced that legislation were definitely against it and thought it was communism when they saw it this time around. There was resistance, That's true. There was resistance and vituperative right. condemnation of even the Republicans' own ideas. It was, which to me was a giveaway right. if they weren't going to go it along with it. It was basically Bob Dole's old health care right. plan. Yeah. That suddenly became anathema. Yeah, John Dingle has been in the House since before Madison created it. Um, <laughs> uh, says that basically we've ended up to the left of where Nixon was. Absolutely. Yeah, was Nixon. I have a better idea. Why don't we end the sanctions against Cuba, the embargo, and do like Venezuela did? Let's import. I agree. Let's ask Cuba. Let's give Cuba some help. Let's give Cuba some help oh. and ask them to send 10,000 doctors to work in our inner cities with free clinics and give away, give away medicine for free, which is what you say. Medicine should not be for profit. I know you disagree with that, sir, but why not make, why does everything have to be for profit? You had a great I uh, soliloquy about yes, that. I agree. But I, I also must say in his defense a little bit, I, I do think emotionalism moves Republicans a lot more than Democrats. Profit moves Republicans. That's true, too. Profit definitely does. But also, uh, you know, mourning in America. Uh, Republicans are suckers for anything that you wrap in the flag and you make about clutching your throat, the bush with the bullhorn, you know, on the mound of rubble. And, you know, I, I think if Obama would did a little more of that, I mean, if he'd go down to the Gulf Coast and just grab a bird and go, why, why? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'm telling you, I think a lot of good could come from that. You know, he is, he is clearly the best communicator in terms of reaching people overall. And I guess my point, our country is way too partisan. We are too polar. Yes. And Democrats can tell Republicans aren't going to come to the table and bad them and too many filibusters. Yeah, I've been there under Clinton for six years and under Bush for six years, and we got a problem. And we all recognize it. And I think the only way we're going to be able to cross it is through effective communication, forcing people together around big issues, which the president chose not to do. Using reconciliation says we're going to jam it through. Why would he use reconciliation? Did he use it because he didn't want Republican votes? No, I you think, think they should have spent I, I more think, time in Iowa talking to Chuck Grassley, trying to get him to support his old ideas, no, no. which he's now against? Why, but why, why, with, why with Medicare legislation before was it bipartisan leadership supported and Social Security in 1933 and Medicaid in 1965? And I'm coming to you. <laughs> but, but why? And I can tell you, I, I, mean, I can just tell you, you in majority leader, we go back to private, you can buy Senate votes as a majority leader. 
So it was a, that Harry Reid wasn't willing to talk to people at the end of the day. You can always, on every legislation, get something. It just depends. And, and the only way it's a big deal is because passing the, uh, the law on health care is easy. What's hard is the 10 years of implementation. And now we have an excuse for a party, yes, it may be Republicans, at this point, not to participate in making this bill law work. Because they weren't at the table up front. If they were up front, they would have some They were at the table. They got up and walked away even from their own Rachel, ideas. You can be mad at Obama that it worked when Republicans Rachel, all said we're going to vote no. But it was Republicans who said we're all going to vote no. When you're asked to vote yes on your own idea and you say no, the problem is you, not the way it's going to be. Oh, so good. My point is it's going to be a lot harder to achieve what America has decided, which is universal health care insurance, because of a, as you said, a trick, reconciliation, lower up to 50 votes, that was used, which means that the American people, the majority of American people don't support the law. You agree with that? 55 percent. No, the poll, well, the, the, it, they don't okay. know it's in the law. They don't know it's in it, but if you poll, the majority of American people don't, and I'm just, the, the Kaiser family poll. But anyway, let's say 50 percent do. At the end of the day, if you're given some ownership to Republicans, I'll guarantee you the right goal, which is universal access, affordable access, the Obama goal of insurance, which is going to be a lot easier. And now we're stuck because of this trick, it's not really a trick, reconciliation that was used has excluded ownership from a very part, important part it of It wasn't a way to keep Republican support away. But the, there was no Republican support. And if you're suggesting that Republicans are going to sabotage the implementation of insurance reforms for political reasons, Rachel, no, I think uh, that's terrifying. No, don't you agree? If, if, uh, if, it's a lot. If, if, if one party... Because we're in a polar environment, it's a polarized environment, it's much more so than 10 years ago or 20 years ago, but the fact that we're there, if 50 percent don't have some ownership in what's going to be a very challenging bill to implement, almost impossible in challenging, it's going to go on for 10 years, 50 percent of the American people represented by Republicans are not at the table. They're not going to do it for political reasons, but, but there's no reason. The, for at the to base of your argument is still the problem of it was Republicans who said no. To their own ideas. All right. So well, I'm not mad at Democrats yes. about that. Let me just do one, one 1933, 1965 thing, because that's what I'm here for. Um, <laughs> the reason it's different is because Social Security and Medicare were both universal benefits, and so everybody got some. This was for the least among us, and therefore it was harder to pass. Right. All right, that will be our final word for the season. Thank you very much, audience. We will see you back here in September. Thank you, our final manager.